today we're going to be talking about high blood pressure i know many people know about this medical condition it is not something new a lot of family members have high blood pressure but the reason why we want to talk about high blood pressure from hyperaldosteronism is because sometimes you could have high blood pressure and it's not because your family member has it, it runs in my family, but because you have a medical condition that is treatable, that once the hyperaldosteronism is cured, your blood pressure is also reserved. So that is why today we want to talk about hyperaldosteronism as one of the causes of high blood pressure. What is this medical condition? Why do you have to know about it, as I said? So I am Dr. Grace and I have Dr. Hope with me. We will be talking today about the other, the causes and how to diagnosis and treatment. But to start with, what exactly is high blood pressure? I know in the past, um, you might have heard when you go to your doctor's office that when they check your blood pressure and they put the cuff, the round thing on your arm, your right or your left arm, and you are seated in a calm position, they check your blood pressure reading to see what value we have. According to the most recent uh, guideline, your blood pressure above 130 over 80 has been counted as high blood pressure. So one of the things that can cause it to be high is hyperaldosteronism. Hyperaldosteronism is a medical condition that occur when your body produces too much aldosterone level. It is an hormone. And this aldosterone is produced by a gland in our body called the adrenal gland. These adrenal glands are two glands sitting on top of the kidney, as you can see in the picture shown. Now, these two glands uh, produce the aldosterone hormone. And the aldosterone level, what does this aldosterone itself does? Is that it controls your potassium and it also controls your sodium. It regulates it. And when there is excess of this aldosterone level in your blood, what happens is that your blood pressure goes up. According to the research, we don't really have um, a standard number to see how common this disease is. But it's been shown that among the age 30 to age 50, you can have high level, uh, if you have your blood pressure high and you are on three different medication or four medications, including a water pill, which means including a diuretics. This means that you need to check your blood pressure or you need to check for this medical condition called hyperaldosteronism because it's usually occur when your blood pressure is very resistant to medications. You're taking three different medications or four different medications. Each time you go to your doctor's office, they are adding one or two more medications. They are going up on your doses and your doctor is even thinking of adding the water pill to control your blood pressure better. Watch out. Your blood pressure needs to be checked for this medical condition called hyperaldosteronism. Most of the time you may have no or little symptoms from this medical condition. So it's similar to your regular high blood pressure working on the streets. You are not even aware you have that medical condition. But if it is that bad, like your potassium level is very low, it can give you symptoms like muscle weakness. And we've had cases of some people coming in with leg paralysis because their potassium level is low. And it can be very, very thirsty, having to urinate or drink much water because of your sodium imbalance. So uh, those are kind of symptoms that you could have. But most of the time, remember, you may have no symptoms. So key point on this point, on this uh, disease is that when you are taking three or four medications on with water pill and your blood pressure is still uncontrolled and you are having muscle weakness or you are thirsty a lot, you should ask your doctor to check you out for hyperaldosteronism. So I'm going to uh, over back to Dr. Hope, who's going to tell us more about what to do when your doctor goes uh, sees you. What are the things we do? What are the, the diagnoses? And how do we treat this? Hello. Thank you, Grace. And welcome again. Uh, so 
I will be talking about the causes of hyperaldosteronism or increased aldosterone levels in the blood. So there are two um, separate categories of high aldosterone. One is called primary hyperaldosteronism and the other one is called secondary. So for the primary causes, one of the most common causes is something called an adrenal adenoma, which is a growth on one of those glands above the kidney. Um, so it could be a growth of on one side or a growth on both sides. Um, the other causes of primary hyperaldosteronism is adrenal hyperplasia. What that is, is an increase in the number of cells and therefore an increase in the size of the adrenal gland. Again, that could be on one side or on both sides. So one gland or both glands. Um, and then there's secondary causes. The secondary causes include uh, increased <clears throat> renin, uh, so that's a, another hormone that can lead to increased aldosterone. And that's just due to a problem in the kidney. Um, other conditions that cause fluid retention can also lead to secondary hyperaldosteronism. And those includes, uh, include problems like heart failure, even liver disease, um, and other kidney diseases. So how do we diagnose this? How do we know that we truly have hyperaldosteronism? The main diagnosis is initiated by blood tests. So we do blood tests for aldosterone levels and potassium. And if they're high, the next step would be to actually confirm that this person truly has high aldosterone levels. So then we give you a high salt diet and then do a 24 hour urine check for aldosterone. If the aldosterone level in the urine is high, even after that high salt diet, then that actually confirms that you have uh, hyperaldosteronism. Uh, the next step would be imaging with a CAT scan to actually look at those adrenal glands to see if there's a growth or increase in size. And then um, we do other tests like something called adrenal vein sampling. And that's where they, they draw blood from both sides um, to confirm which side is really the true cause of the high aldosterone levels. Okay, so once we diagnose it, how do we actually treat hyperaldosteronism? How do we treat this high aldosteronism? One of the main treatments is um, a medication called spironolactone. Um, and spironolactone helps uh, control the effects of the hyperaldosteronism. Another treatment is surgery. If, uh, if it's found that you have a growth on one of your glands, then we actually remove that gland because you have the other gland that could function um, to provide the functions that's needed for the adrenal gland. So surgically, um, uh, one of the glands is removed if there's a growth on that gland. Um, so those are the, the main treatments of medications and surgery. Um, those are used to treat hyperaldosteronism. And once those treatments are given, then uh, the blood pressure actually returns uh, to normal in many people or goes down significantly. And if you had a low potassium level, then the potassium level actually goes back to normal. Um, so back to you, Grace. Thank you so much, Dr. Ob. That was very insightful. So uh, as you've heard today, uh, the essence of bringing up this topic to us is basically so we understand that if you have high blood pressure, and uh, everyone around you has high blood pressure but in your own case you're taking three pills or four pills or you are a young person your age is between like less than 30 or you are even between 30 and 50 and you are on all these medications i think it's best for you to make sure that they rule out all that possible causes that are treatable that once it is treated your blood pressure resolves people may ask is there a way to prevent this medical condition that is called hyperaldosteronism unfortunately there is no way to prevent it but the good thing is you find it you figure it out you treat it and you live healthy remember the more you know the better you are you thank are. you for watching us today